Hello, I'm Dr. Gerald Chodak. So, you've undergone radiation therapy sometime in the past, either in the form of external radiation or the seed implantation. And over a course of time, you've been following your PSA, and now the PSA is beginning to rise. So, what does that mean? Do you have recurrent cancer, or is there some other possible explanation? Well, a couple of things. Number one, those men that have had seed implantation can get an artificial bump in their PSA for a short period of time within the first couple of years of undergoing that treatment. It's thought to occur because stem cells are dying and they're releasing their PSA into the circulation. That is not a serious thing and followed for a little bit longer those PSAs will come down. Now, there are also men who can have either form of treatment and the PSA begins to rise and continues to rise. And when that occurs, we expect and suspect that that's because there's cancer cells that have not been destroyed in your body. Now the question is, what do you do about them? Well, depends on several factors. Number one, we've learned that if your PSA is going up within the first year of having your radiation, that's probably a more dangerous situation than if it's taken four or five or six years for the PSA to begin to rise. Another key factor is how fast is it rising? We look at the PSA doubling time. How long does it take for the PSA to double? And if it doubles quickly, some people say in less than three months or six months or eight months, that that's quick for a man that's had radiation therapy and those men may be more at risk and may want to consider some form of treatment. On the other hand, if the PSA is doubling more slowly than that, then you're probably not in any need to rush into some form of therapy. Now, what can we do to sort this out? In other words, how do we know where the cancer cells are located? They could either be in the prostate still or they could be outside the prostate, or they can be in both locations. One of the things that is considered in some cases is to undergo a prostate biopsy to see are there still cancer cells present. Why would you do that? Well, you would do that test depending on what you would consider as a reasonable option for your treatment. As I've mentioned in other videos, if you've had radiation, it is still possible to undergo radical surgery and remove the prostate gland. So, if you are a patient who's in good health and has a good life expectancy, and we know that there are still cancer cells in your prostate, taking out the prostate is an option, although it does have higher risks than doing surgery in a man that's never had radiation before. Still, it is one of the options. Another option is to consider some form of hormone therapy, Hormone therapy can affect the cells that are in the prostate, out of the prostate, or both cases, in, if that's the situation. So hormone therapy is another option. And something called intermittent hormone therapy is being looked at where a patient goes on hormone treatments for a while, suppressing the testosterone level, lowering the male sex hormone, and then after a number of months, the treatment is stopped allowing the testosterone to return to normal and the treatment is restarted again when the PSA begins to rise. And in that way, you keep a patient relatively stable, keeping their cancer from growing, but also preventing them from having long-term side effects from the hormone therapy. How effective is it? Well, that's not clear. There are no good studies proving whether intermittent therapy or continuous therapy will prolong survival for a man with a rising PSA who's undergone radiation in the past. It is an option, and it is an aggressive option for a man that says, look, I understand you don't know for sure, but I would rather be, do as much as possible rather than be more conservative. Each patient must participate in that decision process because the fact is we don't have any scientific studies to tell us what is the best form of treatment. In addition to doing a biopsy of the prostate, we can also do some other scans. A CAT scan, a bone scan, or a prostatin scan can be done looking for cells in other parts of the body. 
And if we were to find cancer cells outside of the prostate, at that point we would treat a patient who has more advanced disease and consider hormone therapy as one of the main options. So those are things that I'll talk about in another video. But those tests can be done to try to determine if cancer is still in the prostate or if it has spread to other parts of the body. So keep in mind that just because the PSA is rising after radiation does not mean a patient is going to get into trouble or die from their disease. There are patients that have a low risk of progression. There are patients that have a very high risk of progression. So the first thing is to sort out which group you're in, consider the various options for testing, and then have a dialogue about the various options available being aware that there are no clear studies about what you ought to do. So that is the way we would consider managing a patient who has a rising PSA. Last point, when should you start considering those tests? Depends on the PSA. If the PSA is less than 10, we're unlikely to find a positive bone scan or a positive CAT scan. Yes, it does occur, but it occurs very rarely. So it's probably not worth getting those tests unless the PSA is moving above the 10 nanogram level. So with that information, you can use it for a rising PSA to understand that after radiation therapy, it's not always a dire circumstance. It's something that continues to be monitored. You continue to check the PSA. And if you're in a high risk group, in those circumstances, you might consider a more aggressive treatment. Thank you.